Hello everybody. Today is February 6, 2019. It is about 44 degrees Fahrenheit right now. And I'll be doing a walking video of the Pulaski Bridge into Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I started from the intersection of 49th Avenue and 11th Street. And to the right of me and above me is the Pulaski Bridge. But this side is for motor vehicles. They have to come under this way in order to get to the pedestrian access. Now crossing over this bridge will bring me into the New York City borough of Brooklyn. Right now I'm in Queens. This is the structure for the Blasky Bridge, the underside of it. Here's 11th Street, but there's no sidewalk there. So I don't want to walk up that street. Instead, I'll just loop around this way. So this street is known as Jackson Avenue. It's a very um, busy street for Long Island City and Queens. And this is the Vernon Boulevard Jackson Avenue subway station on the number seven train. If you hop on that train, one stop will take you into Manhattan at 42nd Street Grand Central. Here's a very good Italian restaurant named Minetta's. And in front of me is the pedestrian access for the Pulaski Bridge. And that super tall skyscraper in front of me is the Citibank building. Right now it is the largest building in Queens and on this side of the river but it's going to be um, replaced by other super tall skyscrapers being constructed in Long Island City. Now here's the pedestrian path for the Pulaski Bridge. There's a bicycle path to the left of me. About three or four years ago, both the pedestrian path and the pedestrian path were shared until the city redesigned this bridge to accommodate a bike lane. I myself have biked over this bridge um, using both designs and I can tell you this newer design works a lot better. So out off in the distance, I don't know if you could see it, but that's the Empire State Building on 34th Street and 5th Avenue. It is a cloudy day today, so it's hard to kind of see things that are far away. There is a chance of rain later on in the day, so I hope it doesn't come in contact with uh, our walk here. Now this bridge, the Pulaski Bridge, the name comes from an American Revolutionary War uh, military commander. He was actually a Polish-American and as I venture into the first neighborhood in Brooklyn right over this bridge called Greenpoint, it's also home to many Polish immigrants and Polish-Americans. So to the right of me is the entrance to the Queens Midtown Tunnel. I see flashing lights over there. Those are probably New York State Troopers or MTA bridges and tunnels. But I believe they are New York State Troopers I see. I see some officers down there already. I don't 
don't know how much the uh, fare for crossing the tunnel is, but there is one to cross over into Manhattan and back over into Queens. Queens. Now this bridge is also a drawbridge. It was built um, built at a standard size, I believe, and over time, uh, boats got bigger and bigger. So they needed a way to open up this bridge to let larger vessels come through. And occasionally, this bridge does need to be opened. There usually is someone here to open the bridge when that happens and I believe the vessels have to schedule their um, arrival and departure times with the New York City Department of Transportation who administers this bridge. So to the right of me below is the Long Island Railroad. There is a stop all the way at the end there for Long Island City. Now the entrance I walked on to get onto this bridge isn't the only entrance. Here's another one that leads um, close to the Newtown Creek here. This area uh, is a very industrial area. It's home to a lot of moving companies and back a few uh, decades ago there were a lot more oil companies along the creek here. And actually this creek is one of the most polluted bodies of water in the whole world because of all the oil companies and, um, and other manufacturing companies using the creek as a disposal ground. So a lot of oil is in the, in the river here in the creek and who knows what other contaminants but it's not pretty. So as soon as I'm halfway across this creek, I'll be in Brooklyn. So this is um, one of the sides, the ends of the drawbridge. There is no uh, fencing here, so it's kind of a little bit nerve wracking if you're afraid of heights, but it's a very, very nice view of Manhattan here. And the bridge does shake over here when the motor vehicles pass right on top of it. So I just crossed over into Brooklyn, just like that sign says on top of that. Um, structure welcome to brooklyn like no other place in the world it's interesting that brooklyn has a different slogan depending on which um, entrance or which like roadway you enter it there is one um i believe on the borough uh, on the border of eastern queens in brooklyn it says forget about it So Greenpoint is still a very industrial area on this side of the river. Closer to the waterfront is more uh, commercial. Further in is actually more residential, but I'm going to get off at the first exit where the staircase is so I can show you uh, the commercial side. I'll actually be walking down Manhattan Avenue, which is uh, Greenpoint's main street other than McGinnis Boulevard which this bridge feeds into.
So here's the staircase I'll be going down to into Greenpoint. So here is McGinnis Boulevard and Ash Street. McGinnis Boulevard used to be known by another name. I think it was Oakwood. Oakwood Boulevard or something like that. I'm not really sure. But I am going to walk along Ash Street. Ash, Ash Street towards Manhattan Avenue. So as you can see, this is a very commercial area. Here's a vehicle repair shop for the New York City Housing Authority. There's all factories here and warehouses and uh, different shops. Here's some street art. Now a little bit about the history of Greenpoint's name. It was called Greenpoint because the European settlers who explored this area discovered a patch of land and that land was green so they called it Greenpoint. No, no joke. It was a small bluff of land that jutted into the East River where Freeman Street is. So I'm going to walk towards the water here. This is Manhattan Avenue and show you the edge where Newtown Creek meets Brooklyn. Here is the Newtown Creek. This creek is a super fun site. Thanks to the oil companies like ExxonMobil and Chevron, this waterway has been very, very polluted.
There used to be a bridge here that connected Greenpoint to uh, Long Island City way, way long ago, but the demands of ship and commercial uh, traffic on the waterways led to the creation of the Pulaski Bridge. You can still see some of the history of uh, where the bridge used to stand by looking off into the distance. There are plans to um, make a pedestrian only bridge towards Long Island City and Brooklyn that was um, theorized by some activists. However, I don't think uh, that plan has much backing or, or any desire from the city to go forward. So this is the Greenpoint Manufacturing and Design Center at the edge of Manhattan Avenue. So I'll be walking down Manhattan Avenue towards Nassau Avenue, which is the border of Greenpoint and Williamsburg. Here's Ash Street again. And interesting about Greenpoint's uh, east and west streets right here was Ash Street and the next street is Box Street the next street after that is Callier Street they're all in alphabetical order so if you're ever lost in Greenpoint without a map you can always refer to the alphabetical layout of the east and west streets to help guide you where you need to go. Many of these streets names came from wealthy families who used to own property here in the 1800s and the 1700s. Long before the Europeans settled here, this area was inhabited by the Native Americans. It's a mean looking frame. So I guess this name of the street, the name of the street isn't Callier Street after all. It's Clay Street. But even still it's an alphabetical order. There is a Callier Street in Greenpoint, and I do know it uh, runs east and west. So as, as I was saying, back in the 1700s, there were major landowners here, and they mainly consisted of five families. One was Abraham Messerol, who lived on the East River between India and Java Streets. 
Jacob Messerol, who was his brother, and he built a farmland at the southern end of Greenpoint. There was also Jacob Bennett, who operated the land in the northern portion of Greenpoint. Jonathan Provost, who had the eastern part of Greenpoint. And Jacobus Callier, which Callier Street is named for, which is much further down. I just checked the map. And he occupied the western portion of Greenpoint. As you can see, um, walking down Manhattan Avenue now, there isn't as much industrial and commercial activity now. Now it's becoming more residential and there's more um, businesses that serve the community, the residential community rather than the industrial community on the river. Like here's a mini mart and a, a deli. Here's a new development going up. A new development going up with the necessary scaffolding that the city requires them to have. So here is Freeman Street. And I just felt some raindrops. I may have to bring out my umbrella. But right now, I don't think it's too bad. Hopefully it stops. And I also hope water doesn't stick onto the lens. So now here's Green Street in Greenpoint along with Manhattan Avenue in Brooklyn. So if someone asks you, I want to go to Manhattan, don't tell them that it's in Brooklyn because Manhattan Avenue is the name of the street, not the borough. Here's a hair salon. Very interesting hair salon. A doctor's office. A thrift and boutique store. There's some holiday uh, street art for you. A really mean looking snowman and Santa Claus. A 
I'm just gonna go around these people here. I don't want to mess with any uh, heavy equipment. A coffee shop, florist. Once I get past Greenpoint Avenue, that will be the most um, commercial area of Greenpoint. You can see a lot of restaurants there and bars and community centers. Over here, it's just getting started. Greenpoint is served by two subway stops along the G train. This is the Greenpoint Avenue subway station. It's interesting that the Greenpoint Avenue subway station has an exit at India Street which is three blocks away from where Greenpoint Avenue actually is. Here's a Polish bakery. I don't want to even begin to try to pronounce that name. NYU has a medical center in Greenpoint as well. Old Poland Bakery. I'm going to try to pronounce this, but excuse my Polish. Hi, Karnia Staropolska. There's some buildings with some lovely architecture here. Not on Manhattan Avenue, but on the side streets where people live. Here's a Starbucks. It used to be a movie theater few years ago McDonald's and this is the busiest area of Greenpoint at Manhattan Avenue and Greenpoint Avenue I'll be entering um, an area where there's a lot of activity So this is an area with a lot of history. In a few moments, I'll, just, I'll walk past the church, which has been in the community for a long, long time. Here's a fruit and vegetable uh, store. A lot of local Polish and Polish American businesses here. Here's a uh, money exchange. Here's the church I was just talking about. The St. Anthony's uh, Roman Catholic Church.
more scaffolding. It's a very lovely cafe. A very nice mixture of businesses around here. Here's a furniture shop. Across the street, there's a phone company, a smoke and vape store, and a hardware store. It's very different from what you'll see walking uh, down a main street in Manhattan. Much more local here. Here's the Greenpoint Savings Bank building, which is now uh, occupied by a Capital One. Back in the day, banks didn't have insurance and the way that banks uh, wanted to show that people's money was safe was by building their buildings like fortresses. And as such, they were very impressive from the outside. That's how they gained people's confidence. Here's a pizzeria, Italian pizzeria. So I didn't mention this before, but I passed by Cowyer Street, which is one of the um, <clears throat> most important families in Greenpoint during the historical times. Messerol Avenue rightly named because the Messerol family had very very big influence in Greenpoint emergency vehicle making its way down. It's an issue here because the street is so narrow for two-way traffic. It makes it difficult for people to move by. jewelry store here's a clothing store Woodstack
So I'm at the southern end of Greenpoint now. In about two or three blocks, I'll be entering uh, the neighborhood of Williamsburg and also the final stop on the G line in Greenpoint, which is at Nassau Avenue. Now I didn't walk through the waterfront in this video but I can tell you that the waterfront is different depending on where you walk. Towards the northern end it's more commercial and um, near the middle and southern end they have some very interesting uh, businesses and places there. There's one business called the Brooklyn Barge which is a bar that actually is on a boat that's halfway into the East River. It's kind of cool and neat. There's a Mexican restaurant, Cherry Point, another bar and restaurant, cafe. And right now, I'm about to cross Bedford Avenue and Nassau Avenue, which are right next to each other. So a block from me is where McCarran Park is and that is the northern end of Williamsburg. McCarran Park is actually um, separated on two sides. There's two sections of the park, each with its own distinctive features. It's a very nice park for the community. And here is Nassau Avenue, the final stop on the G train and also where I'll be ending my video. I hope you enjoyed this video of me walking down Greenpoint and I hope you learned something. Subscribe, like this video and share it with your friends and everybody you know. Take care. Thank you.